my next guest, Mark Moran, uh, a former athlete who was hospitalised in 2005 uh, due to spinal problems and came up with an ingenious idea uh, to help people stop getting dehydrated in hospital, but more importantly, stop getting dehydrated at home so they don't need to go into hospital. Uh, now very pertinent, given what happened at Mid Staffordshire, and generally um, stories of people dehydrating in hospital and at home. Um, so a remarkably simple invention. Tell us your story first, Mark. What happened to you? Um, well, I was a I was a spinal patient really, and um, when I came to after the operation, I could see the drink, but I couldn't reach it. You'd had um, a what? A slip disc or? A... I'd had all sorts of oh. damage over the years through rugby and sports mm. and whatnot, and um, it just got to the point where I needed fixing. Mm -hmm. um, so I was in hospital. I knew I was going to be. I knew I was coming out again. It wasn't a long term thing, mm. um, but. You know, being an athlete and all the rest of it, I, I know a thing or two about hydration, and mm. I, I couldn't get a drink easily on my own. Um, so I had my, my girlfriend bring a um, one of these hydration packs in that athletes use, mm -hmm. and I could get a drink. Mm -hmm. And all the nursing staff thought this was brilliant. Mm. And So remarkably simple. Describe it. As this is radio, describe exactly what it entails. Well, well basically, it turned out there was no simple gadget, so okay. I couldn't believe that. But there are ones athletes use where they put a backpack on their back that's or something to stick exactly, it down in their mouth. That's exactly where the idea came from, Phil. Okay. Yeah. And um, the difference is with, with the hydrant, I know this doesn't make good radio, but the, the, the problem with the hydration packs is they're very difficult to clean. Mm. So all we did was take that idea, mm -hmm. put it into a sports drinking bottle with a very clever clip, mm -hmm. which enables it to clip onto mm. a bed or a chair or a wheelchair. Um, you get the tube close to the person who needs a drink, mm. They can then drink whenever they want. Mm. And if you think about how you drink, you don't drink a load all in one go. No. We just sip. And lots and lots of people in a healthcare situation, whether it's at home or in hospital, if you can't reach or lift or hold a drink, mm. you're reliant on somebody else to help you. Mm. And if they're not there, mm. and like if you're at home, the carer comes in a couple of times a day, mm. or if you're in a hospital, you know, a lot of people don't like to bother the nurses because... You know, the nurses are too busy. Mm. So what's happening? People are, people are getting very, very thirsty. And people can dehydrate to death. It's quite a common cause. You get your fluid balance too low and your kidneys Absolutely. don't work and you're in all yeah. sorts of trouble. Can I have a look at that? Sure. I mean, there are two deaths a day documented in the NHS mm -hmm. um, with dehydration on the death certificate. And lots in the community. Yeah. Lots in the community. Um, so this is wonderfully simple. Mm-hmm. Presumably you had to patent this, didn't you? Because other people yeah. are going to see this going, oh, we can do that. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's all done patented, and people yeah. can't copy it. But how easy has it been? Because I would think the NHS would snap me, bite your hand off to get these. How well, hard has it been selling to the NHS? I think uh, taking on the NHS single-handedly is about the most stupid thing you could ever do. But um, we're getting there slowly. Um, what you find with the NHS is there are pockets of awfulness mm. and there's a lot of really good stuff um, mm. and it's finding the people who can make decisions and make things happen is the biggest challenge. Mm. When you find people who can make decisions and make things happen, like we have at Great Western Hospital in Swindon for example mm -hmm. or Stoke Mandeville um, mm. and Headley Court where the, the, the military guys go after they've been blown up, people make yeah, decisions and make things happen. Yeah, yeah they've been using it for a long time um, and we've had some um, funding come out of the Department of Health through a chap called Jim Easton, who was mm -hmm. the director of efficiency. He's he no loved it. There. He's, he's, no, to he's UK, hasn't he? oh, sadly yeah. no longer there. He has gone to Care UK. Well, you can sell it to them as well. I'd have thought. Absolutely. I mean, the biggest market actually isn't the hospitals. The yeah. biggest, the biggest opportunity for this, or the biggest problem actually, mm. as opposed to opportunity, is in the community. Mm. There's a, a huge flow of people going into hospital with urinary problems mm. um, and it's fundamentally caused by lack of fluid mm. and the lack of fluid is fundamentally caused, I believe, mm. by lack of easy access. Mm. So you've got something like 12 million bed days a year down mm. to urinary issues. It's, it's absolutely breathtaking. So this bag is, uh, what's this, a litre bottle or a two litre? Yeah, litre yeah. Lit litre so bottle. So somebody still has to change that or...? Yep. So you need a few litres a day, so, so yep. you still need someone to come in and change that. And... Yeah, you do. Um, however, what I'd say is if you started the day with a litre mm. and that's all you got, that's so much you're, gonna, than... you're not going to die of dehydration. No. Um, and that's a big step forward for an awful lot of people. Mm. Um, and, you know, when you look at the, the link that dehydration has with falls, with pressure sores, with um, the, the, the severity of dementia, mm. um, and on and on and on. There's a massive link between dehydration and mm. all kind of other things. Mm. And of course, in a hospital, you get dehydrated, they put you on a drip. Mm. And, and, it, and all the other risks involved with that. Huge amount of risks mm. with that, huge cost, 
If we stop one drip in a hospital setting, mm. we're probably saving that trust a thousand pounds a time mm. because you, you're reducing length of stay, you're reducing infection risk, mm. you're making it easy for everybody. Mm. Um, and you know, the nurses love it because it's saving them yeah, time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, of course they do. Well, I mean, you would imagine this is a very simple invention that's of its time. Uh, how are you going to get more and more people using this? Well, How's, think, what's it like selling to general practice? I think coming on shows like this helps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's a function of time as much as anything. The, the longer we go on, the more people are using it, the more people talk about it. Yeah. Um, it is very difficult to find how to market to the healthcare market. As big yeah. as it is, there's no easy path. Yeah. Um, but we've That's got... ridiculous, isn't it? People always say, you get all these entrepreneurs I've met who have brilliant ideas, they say selling to the NHS in different areas is like selling to 50 different countries. They all have their own rules and regulations and just because it's been proven to work in one hospital or one community setting... You're absolutely mean... right. I was at a hospital in Southport yesterday yeah. and it's got to go through their infection control team. Yeah. Well, it's been through loads of infection control teams. It's on the National Health Service procurement um, yeah. yeah. setup, so you yeah. can buy it in any, hosp any hospital, any computer. Yeah. But, well, it hasn't been through our, through our infection control team. That's what has to change, isn't it? Well, you need to get in touch with Tim Kelsey, who's, uh, I know, in the commissioning board, who's in charge of innovation. He's just doing big conferences on it, so this is just the kind of thing that you can imagine it making a huge difference. Can't you? The impact it's well, having and the results we've got are phenomenal. We've can seen I this? absolutely. I've, this I've got some for you. <laughs> I can take it round. Yeah, we, we've seen um, things like a 35% reduction in length of stay in hospital, 100% reduction in urinary infections. I mean, these, these numbers hide the, the benefit for the patient, but the cost savings are phenomenal. Has this begun your life now? I mean, did you get... What day job were you doing before this? I used to be a sort of management guy for Ford, but, um, yeah, wow. I've been doing this for five years, and it's just about cost me the house. It's been, been a pretty rocky road, but... Okay. But you've got that We're passion. There. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for so much for taking the time. If people want to look at uh, the website, and what do they need to do? What's um, hydrateforhealth.co.uk. Okay. Very simple. Um, or just Google. Google you tweeted the hydrant. me, didn't you? That's where I saw the link. I yeah. saw your film, and it's really good. And there are testimonies from doctors and nurses at the Great Western. Thank you so much, Mark, for taking the time to join us. Good luck with that, and keep us updated. Come and see us again soon. Thanks very much, Phil.